Lydia, do you have the button? Yes, sir, I do. Okay, I think we got another another one minute. Okay. Minute. Okay, I've got six o'clock if you want to take us live. All right, we're live. All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our Tuesday, July the 14th City Council agenda. I now call this meeting to order. Uh, the pledge and invocation tonight will be given by the chair, uh, myself. So council, there you go, Councilman Smith. Uh, if you would, let's all pledge the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Of the United yeah, States of America, America. and to and the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under God, God, God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, liberty and, justice and justice for all. For all. Oh. Thank you, Vice Chair. I'm going to be reading from uh, Jeremiah uh, chapter 17 this evening. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope is who whose hope the Lord is, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green and shall not uh, be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Would you pray with me, please? God, I pray that we would all put our trust in you tonight. Uh, give us wisdom and understanding on how to uh, govern and the decisions that we need to make. In your name I pray, amen. 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 Okay, uh, tonight under special presentations, we do have a public hearing, the Area 3 Historic River uh, to Ridge Plan. Uh, Miss Lydia, if you would go ahead and bring John Bridger in. Uh, yes, sir. A moment. I think he's going to give us just a uh, or one of his staff is going to bring it, uh, give us a brief synopsis of the plan. And then we're going to ask uh, for the, uh, those in attendance, uh, if you would like to speak regarding the Ridge to River plan for you to raise your hand. Mr. Bridger. Yes, good sir. Evening. Good evening. Yeah, I'll be very short. I think if you mind bringing Karen Hunt in, she's going to actually do the presentations. She has a okay. very short presentation. Just as a reminder, of course, we did a pretty full briefing last week, and so since we want to give plenty of time for the public to comment, I think we'll just speak, spend a little more time on the process up to this point. Um, so Karen's got a short, like, five or six slides to run through with you, uh, and then we can open it up for public comments. Sure. Okay. Ms. Hunt, if you unmute your mic. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, you've muted. You're, you're back muted. The joys of being on Zoom. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Let me share my screen. And. Okay. Can everyone see this? Can. Yep. All right, sorry, I'm at the end. Let me go back to the beginning. All right, um, so for those who may not be as familiar with the area, um, just quickly review the boundary of the historic River to Ridge area. Um, first of all, South Chickamauga Creek is the, the northern boundary. Uh, Missionary Ridge on the east uh, goes down to Interstate 24 on the south. And then on the west side, it's bounded by uh, the Tennessee River, the railroad lines, and Central Avenue is, is down here in the bottom left corner of this map. There are 17 registered neighborhoods in the Historic River to Ridge area. We had the, the pleasure of getting to work with, with all of them during this process, which was really great. Um, we, in fact, we had a really um, thorough and robust uh, public participation process. We got to work with a, a lot of folks in the community. And I'll, I'll just quickly go some of, over some of those meetings. First of all, we had an advisory committee. Um, the people that were on that advisory committee were the uh, representative from each of the 17 registered neighborhood associations in the area, as well as a couple business leaders from the area. 
Um, we had a, a number of meetings with the advisory committee, as you can see there. Um, we also had a, a large email list uh, and the staff sent regular updates. In fact, we're continuing to send regular updates out to all the folks on our email list. Also, as we've done with, or as we are doing with all of our area plans, we sent a direct mail letter out to all 6,187 property owners in the area to let them know that the plan was going on, to encourage their participation, ask them to sign up on our email list. We also um, sent out a couple surveys. Uh, on one, we received 880 complete responses back. So we thought that that was a good representation. We also met with a, a number of groups we call stakeholders. We met with some service providers in the area, um, folks like the Chattanooga Food Bank or CARTA. We met with a number of major employers, including some of the large industries in the area. Uh, we met with some agencies and organizations that work with arts, culture, parks, recreation, things like that. Uh, we also talked to some developers uh, that were doing some work in Area 3 uh, and, of course, met with the, the Planning Commission on a, a couple occasions. And then we also had a number of large open public meetings. First of all, uh, we kicked off the process back in June of 2018. Uh, at the Carver Center. That was our kickoff meeting. Uh, we had another meeting in January of the following year. Uh, in March, we had three workshops with the school kids, which was really fun. We really in enjoyed talking to them. We met at uh, three different recreation centers in March. Uh, in June, we met with some of the property owners uh, around the centers that are designated uh, throughout the area in the plan. And then in September of this past year, we presented the draft plan at Orchard Knob Elementary School. Uh, I will tell you that was a standing room only meeting. We set up for 200 people, had chairs for 200 people and we had over 300 show up. So it, it was crowded, but we managed to get through it. Um, after that presentation, we then reached out to uh, all of the registered neighborhood associations again, just to see if they had any issues or, or concerns, we could answer any questions, clarify anything about the plan for them. And then um, finally in April and May of this year, we got started with a, a couple planning commission meetings that kicked off the adoption process, part of all of this. <clears throat> So out of all of that community input, surveys, all of the meetings, a number of issues were voiced by the community and the six that you see here were the six that rose to the top. Um, first of all, preserving the existing single family neighborhoods was really important to this community. They, they value home ownership and that was just a very important thing to them. Um, they also recognized that they needed uh, more diversity more housing options in the area, including affordable housing. And sometimes those two things can conflict, but we think we've, we've come up with a, a way that addresses both of them. Uh, walkable commercial centers. People said they, they wanted more pedestrian friendly retail. They wanted to see new retail, but they wanted it to be pedestrian friendly. We showed um, pictures of, like you see here on the screen, of the um, area at Glass and Chamberlain also, the one on the bottom is um, got an Udawa, Cambridge Square, a new development. And that's the type of thing people said they wanted. They didn't necessarily want the, the drive up uh, traditional commercial strip centers that you see lining our corridors mostly these days. They wanted it to be more pedestrian friendly. They recognized that they had a lot of parks in the area. Um, but felt that some of those parks needed to be improved, perhaps some new amenities added. They also felt they needed better connections, pedestrian connections to those parks. They wanted to see some, some more greenways throughout the area to connect their neighborhoods to the parks. Um, related to that, a lot of folks mentioned that uh, the ped safe pedestrian realm was a big issue for them. In fact, this was the number one issue for the school kids. We thought they might say, they wanted more parks or playgrounds, but they said, no, we have plenty of parks, but we just don't feel always comfortable going to them because they didn't feel safe on the sidewalks. They didn't feel safe riding in the bike lanes because um, they're right next to those heavy traffic streets and there's no real safety barrier between them. So that was a big issue with the kids. 
And then finally, transportation to services and jobs, which was an issue that was raised not only by the residents, but also by the business owners. In fact, a number of the industrial uh, business representatives. So that is one of their biggest issues with recruiting and maintaining employees, that a lot of folks don't have a car and they have no other means of, of getting to work. So that, that was a big issue for them. So how does the area plan address all of these issues? Um, this diagram that you see on the right, is it's not meant to represent area three exactly. It's just a generic diagram that illustrates how the staff is trying to approach all of these important community issues. And we're using what we call a centers and corridors approach. And I'll kind of quickly describe that. First of all, Again, protecting those core single family neighborhoods was a, a, the number one issue, I would say, with folks in this, this area. Um, and you'll see here on the diagram in this tan hatched area, that represents that core single family area. So the plan proposes to, to preserve that as single family only, maybe some, some ADUs, but primarily single family residential. Around that, outside of it, but around it, you see the, the solid tan color that represents areas where you could start to see a little more mix of some moderate density housing, what we call uh, missing middle, it would still retain that single family character, but begin to see a mix of some other types of housing. And then beyond that, you see the orange areas. And that's where you would start to see some higher density residential development, maybe some large apartment buildings or even uh, some, some commercial office buildings. But you'll notice that First of all, those areas are, are not next to the core single family uh, areas, but they are located around these blue areas. The blue are our corridors. Those are the busier streets where our transit lines are located. And as you know, it, it's a little difficult to make transit work in a low density area. So we really want to put our higher density residential development and higher intensity commercial development along those corridors to support that transit. Um, you also see in the, the red circle and the pink circle, those represent centers. Again, those are those walkable commercial centers. Um, the VC and the red represents village centers, which are the larger ones. Um, we've designated two in this area, one at Glass and Chamberlain, and then another one at Macaulay and Holtzclaw. Um, the smaller pink circle represents neighbor, what we call neighborhood nodes. Um, we've scattered a number of those throughout uh, the historic river to ridge area, but they would be much smaller, maybe just a couple businesses around a key intersection. And then finally, folks also mentioned that they wanted to see uh, more jobs for residents, but uh, they'd also like to see some industrial jobs, but they didn't necessarily want um, heavy industrial jobs that can create nuisances like traffic or, or fumes or noise or whatever located near the residential areas. So what we're proposing to do in the plan is to keep those uh, more intense, larger industrial uses away from the residential areas. Most of those are along the Amnicola Highway corridor, but then maybe allow some places where you could have smaller um, clean industries, like places for new startup industries, maybe a cabinet maker or a glass blower that could fit in a little closer to the neighborhoods. Again, not right smack in the middle of the single core single family areas, but close enough where people can maybe walk to jobs. And that's what you see here in the purple. So that's just a, a quick summary of the approach we're taking. Again, we, we think this approach does a good job of balancing the community's concerns for preserving the existing single family areas and at the same time allowing a, a mix of new higher density housing and, and some new commercial uh, businesses along those corridors that will also support transit. Um, so that's really it, other than I, I did want to mention um, to anyone from the community that's watching uh, that even though our staff are primarily working from home, you can still send questions to us at rpa at chattanooga.gov and we will respond to you. Um, also, the draft area plan and the nine modifications that are being proposed are still on our website uh, and available for people to look at, and that's chcrpa.org. So I will stop. 
Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hunt. Uh, Mr. Bridger, thank you for the presentation. Uh, if we could take down uh, the shared screen, thank you. Um, and unless Mr. Bridger, you have something else to add, we will excuse you, sir. <laughs> and Ms. Hunt, thank you. Okay, uh, earlier we did decide to uh, limit uh, each individual's speaking time to three minutes during this public hearing. So if you have registered to speak and you would like to speak at this time, would you please raise your hand uh, in order to address the council at this time? And I'm gonna ask uh, our vice chair if he would uh, confirm that the people that are raising their hand have indeed registered to speak on this topic. And you are muted at this point. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, definitely the first few, and I'll go through the others um, as we get to those, sir. Okay. Would you put our three-minute clock up on the screen, please? Ah. And oh. while he is doing that, Miss Lydia, would you bring in Laura Jones? Yes, sir. Ms. Ms. Jones, if you would hold on one second, we'll get the uh, clock up on the screen and you'll have three minutes. Sure. Working on it, sir. Be there in one second. Okay. All right, good to go. Okay, Ms. Jones, floor is yours. All right. Um, good evening, Council. Thank you so much for having this public hearing and for um, permitting people the opportunity to be heard. Um, I just wanted to reiterate a lot of things that you all already know, but just wanted to remind you that um, RPA, as you know, has spent the past couple of years engaging the community um, on this plan. They've married their best practices as professionals in the field of urban planning and design and understanding uh, how design influences community and economic development for better or worse. Um, and they've, they've coupled that with the, what they've heard from the community as wants and needs and goals. And, and so I, I trust them and this plan and would encourage you to approve it. However, um, I would discourage you from approving the modifications, specifically the uh, alternate, alternative language uh, recommended by planning commission. Unlike RPA, which is a body of experts in this field, planning commission are all appointed by our city and county mayors. Um, it's a body of predominantly white men, developers and realtors who stand to benefit from the decisions that they make in regards to zoning and planning. Um, and they are not a reflective body of our city. Um, as far as demographics are concerned. Um, so I don't trust the somewhat related knowledge that they have in regards to these issues. Um, as RPA mentioned, most of the modifications from their feedback were improvements upon the plan, um, but the two specifically alternative, the alternative language for modifications five and six uh, I would recommend that you not adopt those. And if it's all or nothing, please adopt the February plan with no modifications. Thank you so much. I uh, relinquish my remaining time. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Lydia Allen McCauley. Yes, sir. Mr. McCauley, can you, un there you go, unmute your mic. You got three you. minutes, sir. Can you hear me now? We can. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. I'll also be quick. Um, um, we, uh, I'm speaking on behalf of the Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum, which is one of the longtime existing <laughs> employers uh, within the Ridge to River plan. 
uh, at its East Chattanooga facility, its main shop uh, uh, area there uh, is, is, is in this plan. Uh, the Railroad Museum supports the plan. The only reason they asked me to come and speak is when we first looked at the plan, uh, and I do not have screen sharing capabilities, but if you look on the side of the ridge directly above the Railroad Museum property, you will see a large green area designated as preserve. There are in fact several preserves um, uh, uh, scattered in that area of the ridge, but the preserve designated closest to the Railroad Museum was incomplete. Um, the Railroad Museum and um, some concerned landowners in that area over the past really 15 years had assembled uh, substantial pieces of land which were sold to the state of Tennessee about five years ago for conservation and open space preservation. The map as published by RPA included the southern half of that property. It did not include the northern half. We have communicated the corrected boundaries to Mr. Bridger and Ms. Hunt. They have drafted a revised map that shows all of the lands owned by the state of Tennessee. And the primary purpose the Railroad Museum wanted to speak up here is just to make certain that all of those remain recognized as lands owned by the state of Tennessee and, and in the so-called preserve. That may generate some questions and I'm happy to answer them. Uh, and I know that uh, the um, staff of the RPA can share the corrected map and I have all already shared it with Councilwoman Coonrod and spoken with her. She understands the boundary adjustments and I will share it with all of you after this meeting. I wanted to make sure that uh, we were on the record uh, asking that those boundaries be corrected. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, I'll relinquish my time unless anyone has a question. I think we're hearing from the public uh, tonight. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Janice Gooden, Miss Lydia. Yes, sir. Miss Gooden, if you can unmute your mic, you have three minutes. Okay, my name is Janice Gooden, and I live in the Riverside area, District 8. I'd like to speak in favor of adoption of the historic River to Ridge area plan involved in the process of this plan development since the public meeting that was held in June 2018 at the Carver Center. I'm currently serving as president of my neighborhood association. I also serve on the RPA advisory committee. Early on, I found that my neighborhood was not included in the previous 10 year land use plan. So I've been intentional about being actively engaged in the current process by participating in meetings, offering input and encouraging other residents to do the same. I'd like to commend Pam Glazer, Karen Hunt and the staff of the RPA for all the work that has gone into the development of this plan document. Uh, Karen's already spoken to the number of meetings that they've held, uh, as well as the surveys. But with each revision and update to the plan, they were posted online and hard copies were also distributed to the YFD centers. But the most important point I would like to make relates to next steps. We must understand that this plan presents recommendations, but it can only serve as a guide. There are valuable tools provided and the idea of forming partnerships is promoted. After plan adoption, it will require the community to be engaged to find partners for projects that we want to see in our communities. It will also require potential partners such as city government, business owners, investors, developers, corporations, to be open and willing to be in partners. Hopefully we have the same goals, the best quality of life, equity in all areas for all residents. Please help our communities to move from just surviving to thriving. Please walk with us, don't run ahead of us. Thank you for listening. 
Thank you. All right, Miss Lydia, Doug Brock. Yes, sir. Mr. Brock, you have three minutes, sir. All right, thank you, Chairman. Um, good evening, everybody. I, I work for a company named Kindle Electric, and we're located in the area. We've got an office down off Rossville Boulevard. I participated on the advisory committee with the regional planning agency. And in my opinion, the plan seems to be a good balance that doesn't excessively restrict growth or development and it addresses homeowner and neighborhood association uh, concerns. It, it seems like the regional planning agency really did a good job of providing plenty of opportunities for the community to provide input. And the participants with me on the, on the advisory committee, along with people in the community I spoke with, felt that their voices were heard. And with that, I. I'd, I'd just like to reaffirm that I, I do support adoption of the current plan. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Matt Lyle, please. Yes, sir. Mr. Lyle, you have three minutes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Um, I'll also be brief. I'm a resident of the Highland Park neighborhood. I live uh, in District 9. Um, and I also had the pleasure of being a part of the process of getting to participate in the, the public sessions, um, as well as getting to have some of the in-depth conversations with um, RPA and Planning Commission about this um, plan and about this process. Um, I, I think the process was fantastic. It was, um, I'd say from the development community side, it probably could have gone quicker um, that the, um, but I think that the pace at which it, it um, was very methodical and took into account um, quite a bit of, of uh, public input. Um, you know, I think there, that the, the, the um, approach of, of corridors um, like this creates um, place. You know, and I think that's really key for a lot of reasons um, from civic engagement. I think it, it um, encourages people to um, be a part of their communities. I, I think, you know, there's a difference between places that feel like places and others that don't. And I think this creates um, a pattern that moving forward can help us start to um, create more places um, at, at very strategic um, intersections and start to really encourage um, the, the kind of, of growth that we want because it, it doesn't crimp um, one specific type of housing which ends to, tends to lead to um, a supply and demand issue which, which can then cause you know, pretty aggressive price driving. Um, you know, I think uh, Jane Jacobs uh, had a great quote that said that uh, cities have the capability of providing something for everybody only because and only when they're created for everybody. And I think that this plan um, is a great long use, uh, you know, long term vision of how we start to drive development patterns towards a, a way of, of um, being created by everybody and providing something for everybody. Uh, and, and with that, I'll, I'll yield the rest of my time. All right. Thank you, sir. Billy Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds, if you will unmute, you have 30 seconds, sir. 30 seconds? Yes. Uh, three minutes? Mm -hmm. I mean, 30 seconds. Sorry, three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, hello, everyone. Um, first, I wanted to say uh, thank you to the Regional Planning Agency um, for your work over the past two years or so researching and planning Area 3, East Chattanooga. Thank you to City Council for looking to adopt this strategic plan. Um, I'm the current president of the Glenwood Neighborhood Association and was a member of the advisory committee behind Area 3, um, and, I, and I do recommend approving this plan. Um, my goal for speaking today is, uh, is just one fold. My, my main goal is just to, um, to continue to serve as a caution against uh, welcoming manufacturing, or I guess the idea would be if it were too much manufacturing to Area 3. Um, you know, we, we've devoted 29 acres to Nippon paint so far. And I think the other 14 acres at the Tubman site are kind of slated for manufacturing. Mm -hmm. um, 
And the Area 3 plan gathered uh, feedback from 800, sorry, 880 people, and no one specifically asked for manufacturing. Um, the word manufacturing can't be found in the summary report, the 31-page the, the summary report. So um, it just concerns me that, that we're getting manufacturing where, where no one really asked for manufacturing, um, although people did ask for jobs and for industry. Um, one other point I would make is uh, manufacturing is being pushed away from the most desirable parts of town. So I think we just need to be skeptical and methodical or strategic um, whenever we do bring it to you know, parts of town, especially whenever it's around neighborhoods and historic neighborhoods. Um, and I would, I guess I would also remind, you know, manufacturing does come with some unpleasant uh, sights, sounds, and smells. Those things can be curbed and can be controlled but we're still bringing them around our neighborhoods. And then so, so in conclusion, um, yeah, I just wanna be a caution against manufacturing. I don't think it's the devil or necessarily bad, but I, I just really question whether or not it belongs in our precious downtown acreage is what I would say, I guess. Um, and I would just again remind, no one specifically asked for it, um, although we do want jobs. But so I do recommend adopting this plan Thank you to everyone uh, for your work on it, but let's just continue to be mindful and strategic about, you know, if we are bringing place types that are being pushed away from other parts of town, I think we really need to think through that for the long run. So, and I, and I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you. Johnny Ware. All right, if you can hear us unmute your mic and you will have three minutes. Vice Chair, would you stop the clock for just a minute, please? Seem to be having a little bit of difficulty unmuting the mic. If you can hear us, would you unmute your mic? Okay, Miss Lydia, we seem to be having a little bit of technical difficulty uh, at this point. Let's uh, maybe try again in just a few minutes. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, Ms. Holmes. Yes, sir. Dr. Holmes, if you can hear us on mute. Okay. Can you uh, hear me you. now? I can hear you now. You have three minutes. Okay. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to address the City Council regarding the modifications number five and six. I would like to state that I strongly support both recommendations made by staff over those made by Regional Planning Commission. As I stated last Tuesday before the council, the residents and neighborhood leaders in the historic River to Ridge area have worked closely with the regional planning staff and these staff members are both sensitive to and well aware of the sentiments and desires of the advisory committee members and residents of the neighborhoods making up the historic River to Ridge area. Regarding modification number five, the Regional Planning Commission has recommended that the natural resources overlay in its entirety be deleted from the listing of description and from the place type map. Although I understand the Regional Planning Commission may prefer to wait until the City uh, Council has acted on the natural resource report that the staff prepared several months ago, and they, along with the City Council, could possibly add something later based on what the City Council decides to do about the steep slopes. My question, however, is why wait? The time is now. Given the uncertainty of our current situation, this may even be overlooked at a future date. It is preferred that the natural resources overlay be included in the plan now because we don't know how long it will take the city council to act regarding the steep slope. Furthermore, having the natural resources overlay in the historic River to Ridge area does not prevent anyone from developing in those locations. 
It merely identifies the location of steep slopes and flood plains and suggests that development in these areas be done in a way that is sensitive to the fragility of the area. Therefore, I would like to recommend that the city council adopt modification number five as stated by staff for the historic River to Ridge area plan. The recommendation is more in line with the thinking of the historic River to Ridge committee. Regarding modification six, members of the historic River to Ridge advisory committee, as well as various members of the neighborhood in this area have spent over two years developing the historic River to Ridge area plan around place type, as well as discussing how place types will be used over the next 10 years in developing the historic River to Ridge area. Almost every discussion regarding the development of this area has included place type. To those participating in this process, place type and the condition of the existing site should be considered with equal importance for rezoning. Although the, Ridge, Riff, although the Regional Planning Commission may feel that place type should not be used to evaluate site plan or any site related condition for rezoning, this is not how neighborhood leaders and residents view the use of place type. Therefore, it is recommended that the city council approve both modifications five and six in, as presented by staff for inclusion in the historic River to Ridge plan. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if we ever got our uh, video difficulty. I mean, I'm sorry, our audio difficulty worked out. Uh, uh, Johnny Ware, if you would like to try it again, and I'm assuming this is a uh, female, Ms. Ware. If you'd like to try again, if you want to raise your hand. Okay. All right, uh, council, I am seeing no more hands at this time. Uh, uh, okay, we're gonna try it again. Miss Lydia, uh, bring Ms. Ware uh, back in. <coughs> uh, I'm seeing a few more hands. Uh, Vice Chair Smith, I'll check the list, sir. Would you verify the last three? And uh, as soon as Miss Lydia brings Miss Ware in, we'll try her again. She's in. Okay. If you can unmute your mic, we will try it one more time. There we go. Can you hear us? Well, your mic is unmuted, but we're not hearing you. <coughs> Ms. Ware? Okay, Ms. Lydia, we're having some technical difficulty. We will. Okay. All right. Um, Vice Chair Ken Smith is, uh, <laughs> is Ken Smith <laughs> registered to speak? He is. All He's right. always willing, welcome to speak. Uh, bring, bring Ken Smith in. All right. Ms. Lydia. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Smith, unmute your mic. Hello, are you there? We are here and we can hear hey, you. Good. You have three minutes. All right, thank you. I'd like to uh, take this time out to thank everyone for their hard and diligent work in this uh, area plan. Um, we work diligent. I'm a member of the advisory committee. I work closely with Pam and Karen and a lot of the staff to bring this project uh, to this conclusion, hopefully successful conclusion. And uh, we, we would love to make sure that this plan uh, is adopted so that we can, uh, for the Avondale community in, uh, in which I represent, can prosper and grow. Uh, a lot of the discussion that I've heard here uh, tonight is all in favor of the plan because there were a lot of people and uh, efforts being made to make this project or this area of plan work. So the historic river to Ridge area uh, with its many neighborhoods has become engaged in the process of planning its growth way back when we started this, uh, like Karen mentioned uh, back in uh, 2018. Uh, it is a process that had a lot of residents awakened to a lot of the assets. I know in Avondale, we were not sure about all the assets we have, but we were awakened to the fact that we had plenty uh, of assets that we wanted to bring to bear. 
We also had lots of potential in other projects, and that was the uh, Nippon paint plant that's coming to the area, the new Avondale Center that was uh, uh, open during this year, and hopefully a lot of other success. As Karen pointed out, there's a lot of uh, areas that we want to focus on, but the main thing we wanted to get across was that the people in this community, Avondale, we love our front porches and we like to sit on them. We like our decks and we like to sit on those too. So we would love to maintain the fact that we can still share coffee, pie, donuts and conversation on our front porch. And I think this plan will help aid in that. And it has the ability to adopt and grow and change and maneuver. And so that's why I am in favor of this plan. I hope that all the council members uh, see the growth and potential and the prosperity that can come forth from this project. Uh, we would love to have the historic River to Ridge plan be the example for the rest of the areas, the other 12 areas that are coming about and are adopting it. And so for that reason, I'm in favor of the plan. I support the plan and I hope that all of its components and its modifications are approved. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, let, me, let me just briefly address Mrs. Ware again. Uh, she's still on the, uh, in attendance. Uh, if you would like to email our clerk, uh, that could uh, stand as part of the public hearing record. Uh, if you would like to uh, do that so that we would have your comments and she could uh, she could forward your comments on to the Chattanooga City Council as well. Okay, uh, we, we do have several other individuals that are registered that have not raised your hand, but if you would like to speak tonight, let me encourage you to go ahead and raise your hand so we can um, verify that you have registered to speak. And uh, again, let me remind you that we are taking comments at this time only about the Area 3 uh, River to Ridge plan. So if your comments are about anything else, we would encourage you to wait until the end. Um, Madam or Miss Lydia, uh, Martha Hunter, please. Well, I'm sorry. I think I did Audrey because they switched places. Hold on. That's okay. That's, that's fine. Go ahead. Thanks. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh, this is Audrey. Lydia. Okay, so this plan is a really, really great idea. Now, when it first got started, I was a little suspect. I thought maybe they're coming in to take over and things is gonna be crazy, big buildings, big uh, uh, stores, and just over rent with a lot of things. But then as I went and was part of the advisory committee, I see that they took very, very specific uh, 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 ideas and, and they, and they listened to what the community wanted. They listened to what the neighborhood association people wanted. They listened to just the regular people. And I really do like this plan. I, I, I'm really hoping that it comes, you know, to, to, to life. Because this, uh, I, I, believe, I live in a glass house uh, um, in the area, the glass forms collected area. Um, and uh, we are booming. We, we started to see a lot of things. We got a store opening up pretty soon and I can see things happening. And as far as the housing is concerned, now I'm really happy about the fact that they're going to keep the single family dwelling situation. They're going to keep it whereas we can keep our uh, the integrity of our, our, our community. And then, you know, that, you know, like, you know, I like to see the bus go by. I like that. I mean, so I like the idea of that. They're going to keep that done. And uh, as far as that uh, sidewalks and, you know, we got a lot of things to work on. So I'm just, um, I, I'm really excited about it. And I wish I'll push, you know, push it on through now because we waiting. That's all I got to say. I'm done. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Okay. Um, that was Mrs. That was Ms. McClure, correct? Yes, McClure? sir. Okay. So there we go. At this time, I do not see any other hands. If you are in attendance and would like to speak uh, and you have registered, would you please raise your hand? Okay, Miss Hunter. Yes, sir. Hi. Go ahead, ahead Miss Hunter. 
Hi, my name is Martha Hunter. Um, I am in District 7. I live at the 50th block of Tennessee Avenue in St. Elmo. Um, I wanted to call uh, and express my support for the amendments that uh, Chattanooga DSA has put forward. Uh, Ms. Hunter, I, I have uh, uh, explained that this is a hearing on uh, oh. the river to ridge plan if you would like to speak uh at our public comment time you're more than welcome to do so then i'm so sorry i thought you were switching oh no no we're still on our uh public uh, hearing for um uh the river to ridge plan sorry about that i misheard the transition thank you okay thank you uh vice chair smith wayne williams could you he's confirm? good he's good uh miss lydia would you bring in mr williams please yes sir Good evening. Good evening. You have three minutes, sir. Thank you. I'm, a, I'm an architect in town. My business is in the Area 3 uh, area. Uh, I'm an employer here. I've followed and participated in the development of the plan. I want to amplify the comments made by Laura Jones and Dr. Holmes. Uh, I think the Planning Commission has done an excellent job putting this plan together and listening to residents and stakeholders. I want to encourage you to, opt to uh, incorporate the modifications as recommended by staff, specifically for modifications five and six, as opposed to alternate B as uh, presented by the Planning Commission. And I can yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, I'm going to wait for just a few seconds to see if anybody else that has registered and in attendance would like to speak at this time on the Area 3 River to Ridge Plan. Okay. I am seeing no more hands, Council. So at this time, I will bring our public hearing to a close. Uh, Councilman, uh, Vice Chair Smith, would you take down the clock? Thank you, sir. And we will um, <clears throat> now come to the next item on our agenda, which is the approval of the minutes. Could I get a uh, motion on the minutes? Approve. Okay. Second. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, give us a roll call, please. Councilwoman Burrs. You're muted, Councilwoman. Yes. There we go. Councilman Bird. Yes. Councilwoman Conrad. Yes. Councilman Gilbert. Yes. Councilman Lefford. Uh, he is not in attendance. Thank you. Councilman Mitchell. Yes. Councilman Oglesby. Yes. Vice Chairman Smith. Yes. Chairman Henderson? Yes. Let's say yes. Okay. Motion to approve the minutes uh, is approved. Now we move into our order of business uh, with the first item, 5A under planning, Madam Clerk. An ordinance to amend Chattanooga City Code Part 2, Chapter 38 Zoning Ordinance, so as to rezone properties located at 901 South Host Call Avenue, 903, 905, and 1001 South Greenwood Avenue, two unaddressed parcels in the 1300 blocks of Bennett and Anderson Avenue, 1310 Anderson Avenue, and 1304 Union Avenue, from M1 Manufacturing Zone, M2 Light Industrial Zone, and R1 Residential Zone, to UGC Urban General Commercial Zone, subject to certain conditions. Councilwoman Coonrod, followed by Councilman Bird. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion on the floor to approve with a proper second. Do we have any questions or comments on this item? All right. If not, roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Oglesby? Yes. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Gilbert? Yes. Councilwoman Coonrod? Yes. Councilman Bird? Yes. Councilwoman Burrs? Yes. Vice Chairman Smith? Yes. Chairman Henderson? Yes. This is eight yeses. Motion carries. Now we'll move into ordinances on first reading. Madam Clerk, 6A, please. An ordinance to amend Chattanooga City Code Part 2, Chapter 38 Zoning Ordinance, so as to rezone property located at 813A Signal Mountain Road from R2 Residential Zone to C2 Convenience Commercial Zone. Uh, Miss Lydia, while 
while we're getting ready for this, would you go ahead and bring uh, Mr. Bridger in, John Bridger? Yes, sir. Uh, since we're now going through zoning. Uh, and I'm gonna ask if an applicant is present uh, in the attendees, if he would raise his hand. And if there is any opposition to this case, would you please raise your hand at this time? Okay, I see no opposition. Uh, John, we heard this in council last week. Um, I've heard no opposition uh, to this rezoning. What would be the uh, council's pleasure? Move to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion to approve with a proper second. Uh, do we have any questions or concerns? Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Burris? Yes. Councilman Burr? Yes. Councilwoman Coonrod? Yes. Councilman Gilbert? Yes. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Oglesby? Yes. Vice Chairman Smith? Yes. Chairman Henderson? Yes. That's eight yeses. Motion to approve carries. Madam Clerk, uh, six, 6B, please. An ordinance to amend Chattanooga, Chattanooga City Code Part 2, Chapter 38 Zoning Ordinance. So that's a reason on properties located at 5235 and 5243 Old Hicks and Pike and 5117 Park and 5120 Good and Lane from R1 residential zone to R3 residential zone subject to certain conditions. Is the applicant present in the attendees if you'd raise your hand, okay? Is there any opposition present uh, tonight uh, regarding this case? Okay, I see no opposition. Vice Chair Smith? Move approval, sir. Okay. Okay, we have a motion to approve with a second. Any questions or comments? If not, roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Oglesby? Yes. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Gilbert? Yes. Councilwoman Coonrod? Yes. Councilman Bird? Yes. Councilwoman Burrs? Yes. Vice Chairman Smith? Yes. Chairman Henderson? Yes. Eight yeses. Motion carries. Uh, now we'll move to 6C, Madam Clerk. An ordinance to amend Chattanooga City Code Part 2, Chapter 38 Zoning Ordinance, so as to rezone properties located at 1933 and 1939 Central Avenue and 1936 Myrtle Street from M1 Manufacturing Zone to UGC Urban General Commercial Zone, subject to certain conditions. Okay, uh, would, is the applicant uh, present? If you'd raise your hand. Okay, I do not see an applicant. Is there any opposition present uh, that would like to voice opposition against this item? Okay, Councilman Mr. Oglesby, what's your pleasure? Yes, I'd be, um, I've, I have talked to the applicant. This is a great project, something I've been a part of since I've came on board here as a city council person. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I move to approve. Second. Okay. We have a motion on the floor with a proper second. Any questions or concerns? If not, Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Councilwoman Burrs? Yes. Councilman Burr? Yes. Councilwoman Coonrod? <coughs> yes. Councilman Gilbert? Yes. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Oglesby? Yes. Vice Chairman Smith? Yes. Chairman Henderson? Yes. Eight yeses. So moved. Seven, uh, I'm sorry, six D, Madam Clerk. An ordinance to amend Chattanooga City Code Part 2, Chapter 38 Zoning Ordinance. So as to rezone property located at 3331 St. Elmo Avenue from M1 Manufacturing Zone to UGC Urban General Commercial Zone. Councilman Oglesby, is this the one that you had some concerns about earlier? Uh, no, I have no concerns, but I did mention I have spoken to the applicant and uh, they have requested a 30 day deferral. So therefore, Mr. Chair and Council, I move that we defer this until uh, August the 11th, which should be our next planning and zoning uh, day. Very well. Move to defer till August the 11th. Do I have a second? Okay. Second. Okay, we have a second. Any questions or concerns, comments? 
Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Councilman Oglesby? Yes. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Gilbert? Yes. Councilwoman Coonrod? Yes. Councilman Byrd? Yes. Councilwoman Burrs? Yes. Vice Chairman Smith? Yes. Chairman Henderson? Yes. Eight yeses. Okay, motion to defer carries. 6E, Madam Clerk. An ordinance to mention Chattanooga City Code Part 2, Chapter 38 Zoning Ordinance. So it's a rezone property located at 1111 South Hickory Street from R1 Residential Zone to RTZ Residential Townhouse Zero Lot Line Zone, subject to certain conditions. Okay, is the applicant in attendance this afternoon? Okay, do we have any opposition present to this item? Okay, it looks like we do have some opposition. Councilman Bird, I guess we need a presentation and then yes, yes, sir, we'll, hear, we'll hear from the applicant and then the opposition. Mr. Thank Bridger, you, you'll unmute your mic, sir. There you yeah, go. Yeah, I will do. I'll share my screen. Can you all see my screen? Yes, mm -hmm. we can. Okay. Um, Again, this is a request this is in the Highland Park community to rezone a property zoned R1 residential zone to RTZ residential townhouse lot line zone for basically subdividing this lot into two separate lots with individual units. Um, the property, as I mentioned, is located in the Highland Park community at the intersection of South Hickory Street and 12th Street. Um, as you can see, um, most of the block is zoned either R4 or UGC on the north side. South side is zoned R1, and this is the last property on the north side that's still zoned R1. Um, you may recall about a year ago, there was a case uh, that was approved by council for rezoning some property to UGC and lifting conditions for like a multi-unit development on this a block, except for this parcel um, that was approved back in 2019. Um, so if you look at the surrounding land use, you do have single family detached residential to the south. Uh, around the property have a mix of townhouses, some condos, and was a formal, former, uh, I think it was part of the Highland Park, I mean, or the Tennessee Temple campus. Um, but you do have some detached single family to the uh, east and to the north. Um, the current plan that's under consideration for Area 3 recommends single family overlay for this location. So again, the, the, the predominant block patterns try to maintain the existing lot pattern along the stretch. Although I would say, um, and so that's certainly looked in, we looked at that as part of our review, uh, still trying to maintain uh, where we can on that block, single family character. Um, but looking at the um, recent rezoning requests, you know, where that property was rezoned to R4 and UGC, uh, uh, staff would actually recommend approval with a condition of limiting it to single family dwellings only. So, you know, trying to stay away from multi-unit, keep it single family, uh, uh, but clearly the lots will be smaller in the situation. It would be two separate individual lots with units on them. Um, planning commission, uh, there was opposition at planning commission and they basically the concern was they would prefer actually there. I don't think the issue was necessarily with the, the development itself. It was the rezoning needed to do what the, what the gentleman was requesting. As I understand it, you know, uh, there's a possibility if, if, if you stuck with R1, you could subdivide the property and get a variance from planning commission. Um, uh, but the, the applicant was requesting RTZ, I guess, to give them more flexibility in terms of how he configured the lots on this property. Um, so we, um, again, staff, or I should say planning commission concurred with staff's recommendation after hearing from um, the applicant, the opposition, um, and the community uh, to uh, approve subject to single family detached uses only. Um, so that is the overview for this re request. If you would take down the shared screen for just one minute. Yes, sir. Uh, at this time, we will hear from the applicant and he will have uh, nine minutes total, seven minutes and then two minute rebuttal. So um, I believe I believe the, uh, well, where did the, where did the applicant go? There we go. Mikara, I believe is Miss Lydia. Yes, sir. Zaid Mikara. Can you hear us, sir? Yes, I can. Okay, you'll have seven minutes. Go ahead. I mean, I'm just like the staff recommended. It's a very simple process. Uh, allow me to put another single family house 
on the street and uh, they approved it. I don't see no problem with it. I will yield my time for rebuttal and for question later and I'll let whoever is interested in asking questions to go ahead and do so. Okay, now you'll only have two minutes at your rebuttal. So you're giving so up six use, minutes. I can't use the time I have remaining. No, it, you'll have you'll have a two minute rebuttal. I mean, it's, it's a simple process. I met with one of the neighbors, uh, Councilman Bird met with another no. neighbor. The two across the street from me are okay with it. I'm not sure I understand the opposition. I'm not doing multifamily. Um, it just, the neighborhood want it um, medium density and that's what they're getting medium density with a single family. Again, I mean, it's it's a simple process, um, not clear again what the opposition is. I mean, in the, in the last HOA meeting, I was called names. I was told I'm making enough money in one house and one person in the HOA meeting said, he don't think I need to do another house because I have enough markup. Another person was objecting to maybe a person parking on the street and taking her spot since she had changed her mind because Councilman Bird showed her that I am putting a driveway. So my buyer or the new neighbor is gonna have their own little driveway so they won't be parking on the street. Um, I didn't hear any opposition in the HOA meeting. I didn't hear any opposition in the RPA meeting that made not necessarily sense, but gave me something to try to improve. The, 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 all the opposition is about me as a person, about the money I'm making and about parking. So we resolved the parking issue. And as of yet, I haven't really heard a just or legitimate reason why I shouldn't be allowed to build a house on my property. Okay, if you will stick around, uh, yes. Ms. Lydia, go ahead and uh, excuse uh, Mr. Mankara. Okay. We'll bring in Dan Heckman. Yes, sir. Mr. Heckman. Hey, Dan Heckman with Highland Park Neighborhood Association. I trust you can hear me okay. Um, I sent a letter, um, I believe it was yesterday. You should have gotten that. I hope you had time to read that. Um, I sent that to all the city council members um, on behalf of the neighbor association, on behalf of the neighbors. And that letter was signed by over a dozen neighbors uh, who live within a block. Can you still hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Keep talking. Um, I, after a few attempts to contact Mr. Mankara, I tracked the applicant down, asked him to please present his proposal at our neighborhood meeting. Um, and the consensus among neighbors is that this particular development is not a good idea. This is not a good candidate for upzoning. Uh, largely in Highland Park, people are in favor of dense developments and of multifamily and stuff like that. Um, but in this case, this plan does not take into account the rest of that block that is not just proposed townhomes, but stuff that's already been approved and building permits issued and is in the works. Um, and I think it's going to create too much density on that block. And the neighbors that live nearby seem to agree with that position. Um, and uh, I'll yield the rest of my time to other neighbors that I think should be on this call that would like to say some things in opposition. Um, but I would, I would appreciate it if this request was denied and he simply finishes his project down the block. Thank you, sir. Uh, Miss Lydia, uh, Sarah Cantor. Yes, sir. Vice Chair, go ahead and stop the clock until we get uh, Miss Cantor up, please. Thank you. Uh, hello? Yeah, go ahead. I, I had uh, requested to speak about the budget amendments. Am I supposed to be speaking right now? No, that will that will come at the end of the council meeting. This this is a, about a zoning case. Right, but you called on me. Uh, well, you had your hand up. I thought you were in opposition to this oh. zoning case. Miss Miss Lydia, go ahead and take Miss Cantor out. She's obviously not wanting to speak. Uh, <laughs> Denise Jones. Hello. Ms. Jones, go ahead. We can hear you. Yes, I live right across the street from the um from the property that he's talking about. And five, 
to seven neighbors right here. We are not, uh, we do not approve of the second dwelling, but we do approve of the beautification that he's doing to the uh, home that he's working on. But uh, that's not true. Councilman Bird did speak to me and I told Councilman Bird, I do not approve of it. And so does all the other neighbors around here. So I don't know who, who he's speaking with, but everybody I've, I've, I've talked to, they do not approve of a second dwelling. Okay. Is that all you have to say, ma'am? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, all right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, I see no other hands in opposition at this time. So I'm gonna ask that the applicant be brought back in, Miss Lydia, for his two minute rebuttal. Yes, sir. And Vice oh, Chair, do you have a, do you have a, hold on one second, sir. Do you have a two minute clock? Working on it. Okay, go. All right, sir, you have two minutes. Okay, um, I'm glad Dan showed up and he did speak. Um, Dan objection and the neighbor's objection, and I was taking note and he said they like density, they like the multifamily that's being developed around me, which is about 14 or 15 unit. But in the same sentence, he said, I will create more density. So again, I listened to him for the third time in the HOA, in the RPA, and right now, I still didn't hear reason why I should be denied. My neighbor, Dennis, I thought she was okay because her concern in the previous meeting was parking. I resolved that issue for her. I thought she was okay. Now, apparently she's not. Again, I'm still waiting for a legitimate, just reason why you gentlemen, gentle lady, should be voting against my request. I mean, they can't be saying two opposite things in the same statement. Yes, we want density. That's why we approve 15 unit, but he's gonna cause more density. I'm, I'm just not sure I understand what's going on. The only thing that lead me is they have an issue with me as a person, um, whether it's me, whether it's my accent, and I'm taking offense because I'm here looking for a reason and I still don't see it. So I'll let you guys do what's right and we'll see what happens. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, Vice Chair, if you'll take the clock down. I'm going to turn the floor over to Councilman Bird. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I did go talk to uh, some of the neighbors there and talk to Miss Denise. And uh, at this point, uh, the community uh, voted us into office to represent them and make decisions for them on their behalf. And right now, Dan, uh, can, according to the letter that he wrote us, according to the constituents that have spoken out, um, they do like density, but they're saying that this is just too much density. This is, uh, you have an apartment complex, so to say, that's gonna be happening in the back of this property and some other things that are going on. And uh, just the community efforts were to squeeze another property on here is just too much. So at this time, uh, move to deny. Second. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to deny with a proper second. Do I have any questions or comments? If not, Madam Clerk, would you do a roll call, please? Yes, Councilwoman Burrs? Uh, yes. Councilman Burr? Say again, move to deny, yes. yes. Councilwoman Conrad? Yes. Councilman Gilbert? Yes. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Oglesby? Hey, you're muted, Councilman. Would you unmute? Sorry about that. Yes. Vice Chairman Smith? Yes. Chairman Henderson? Yes. Let's say yes. Uh, motion to deny carries. Okay. F, Madam Clerk. An ordinance to amend Chattanooga City Code Part 2, Chapter 38 Zoning Ordinance, as, so as to resume property located at 1701 Dotson Avenue from M3 Warehouse and Wholesale Zone to C5 Neighborhood Commercial Zone. Is the applicant in attendance? Would you raise your hand? Okay. I see no applicant. Is there any opposition in attendance? Would you raise your hand? If not, uh, Councilman Bird? Yes, thank you, sir. I have not received any opposition to this. Uh, move to approve. 
Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to approve with a proper second. Questions, comments? If not, Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Councilman Oglesby? Yes. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Gilbert? Yes. Councilwoman Coonrod? Yes. Councilman Bird? Yes. Councilwoman Burrs? Yes. Vice Chairman Smith? Yes. Chairman Henderson? Yes. Ms. Eight yeses. Uh, motion carries. Uh, G, please. An ordinance to amend Chattanooga City Code, Part 2, Chapter 38, Zoning Ordinance, so as to rezone property located at 2202 Bennett Avenue from R2 Residential Zone to RTZ Residential Townhouse Zero Lot Line Zone, subject to certain conditions. Is the applicant in attendance? Okay. Do we have any opposition in attendance? Would you please raise your hand at this time? Any opposition to this item, would you please raise your hand? Okay, Councilman Bird, I think this is you again, sir. Yes, sir, I have not received any opposition. I've heard some good things about it, so I move to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to approve with a proper second. Questions or comments? If not, roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Bird? Yes. Councilman Bird? Yes. Councilwoman Coonrod? Yes. Councilman Gilbert? Yes. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Oglesby? Yes. Vice Chairman Smith? Yes. Chairman Henderson? Yes. Ms. Eight yeses. So moved. H, please. An ordinance to amend Chattanooga City Code, Part 2, Chapter 38, Zoning Ordinance, so as to rezone properties located at 1001 and 1003 South Beach Street from RTZ Residential Townhouse Zero Lot Line Zone to UGC Urban General Commercial Zone, subject to certain conditions. Is the applicant in attendance this evening? Would you raise your hand? Is there any opposition in attendance uh, this evening? Would you please raise your hand? Councilman Bird, I uh, see you. no opposition to this. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, Chair. Talk to the Neighborhood Association, and they are all good for this, so I move to approve. Second. A motion on the floor to approve with a proper second. Questions or comments? Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Councilman Oglesby? Yes. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Gilbert? Yes. Councilwoman Coonrod? Yes. Councilman Bird? Yes. Councilwoman Burrs? Yes. Vice Chairman Smith? Yes. Chairman Henderson? Yes. Eight yeses. Motion carries. Aye, uh, please. An ordinance to amend Chattanooga City Code, Part 2, Chapter 38, Zoning Ordinance, so as to rezone properties located at 2501 and 2505 East 12th Street and 1024 Peach Street Street from R2 Residential Zone to RT1 Residential Townhouse Zone. Is the applicant in attendance today? Yes. Is there any opposition in attendance? I see no hands. Councilwoman Coonrod. Um, it's been a great pleasure working with Mr. Ingram. Uh, Ridgedale community is excited and on board as well. So I move to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to approve with a proper second. Questions or comments? If not, Madam Clerk, roll call. Councilwoman Burrs? Yes. Councilman Bird? Yes. Councilwoman Coonrod? Yes. Councilman Gilbert? Yes. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Oglesby? Yes. Vice Chairman Smith? Yes. Chairman Henderson? Yes. Eight yeses. So moved. Mr. Bridger? Yes, any, I promised it. Yes, sir. Any any comments from, from you this evening? Yeah, just a real quick comment. Um, just a note that uh, I want y'all to know that um, we are trying to work on some better zoning tools for these urban residential infill projects. Uh, normally, you won't have UGC in the middle of a neighborhood. Uh, and part of that reason is we don't have a good urban residential infill tool. So just know that we'll be talking to you about that when the area plan comes to you all for vote at the end of the month. Um, and we're already working on a, a short term fix to our RTZ zone. So I just highlight that, um, that, you know, that's one of the challenges I think sometimes these cases is we're trying to uh, uh, take a zone and add all these conditions to make it work in a neighborhood. 
Um, so we are just you know we're coming to you at the end of this month with some uh, requested to develop some tools to help facilitate this development going forward. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Bridger before we leave? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bridger. Miss Lydia. Yes, sir. You can see Mr. Bridger out. Yes, sir. All right. Now we move to six J, please. An ordinance to amend Chattanooga City Code Part Two, Chapter Sixteen, Section Sixteen Fifty Nine through Sixteen Sixty Six, regarding the Police Advisor and Review Committee. Okay. What's the pleasure of the council? Move approval. Second. Okay. We have two. Um, we have the original, and we have an alternate version. Um, Councilwoman. Well, I believe the alternate was the one that uh, Mr. Gilbert brought. Yes, that, that, that's, that's correct. It was the clarification language. That's clarification. That's correct. Yeah, that's what I moved. So you're moving the alternate version. Yes. I just want to be clear. Okay. Sure. All right. We have a motion on the floor for the alternate version. Did I hear a second? Second. Second. Okay. Yes. We have a second. Any questions or comments? Councilman Gilbert, uh, I see your hand. Is that you want to comment? No, I'll lower it. I was going to ask about the alternate. Right. Okay. All right. Um, Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Councilman Oglesby? Yes. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Gilbert? Yes. Councilwoman Coonrod? Yes. Councilman Bird? Yes. Councilwoman Burrs? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Vice Chairman Smith? Yes. Chairman Henderson? Yes. Eight yeses. Okay, motion carries, thank you. Um, now we move on to resolutions. Um, ordinarily, I would take these as a package, but I think uh, we might need to vote on these individually tonight. Um, Madam Clerk, read 7A, please. A resolution urging the Tennessee General Assembly to consider amending the definition of discriminatory practices as set forth in Tennessee Code Annotated Section 421-102. Four, to include the following characteristics, ancestry, disability, gender identity, military status, and sexual orientation. Uh, Councilwoman Burrs. Mr. Chair, I mentioned earlier that I would have to leave earlier, but not until I had the privilege of moving the passage of this. Second. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to approve with a proper second. Any questions? If not, Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Councilwoman Burrs? Yes. Councilman Burr? Yes. Councilwoman Coonrod? Yes. Councilman Gilbert? Yes. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Oglesby? Yes. Vice Chairman Smith? Yes. Chairman Henderson? Yes. Eight yeses. So moved. Thank you. All right. 7B, please. Resolution calling for change in voting procedures by the Tennessee General Assembly to give every eligible voter the opportunity to cast their ballot without the risk contracting or spreading COVID-19. Councilwoman Coonrod followed by Councilman Bird. Also approved. Second. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to approve with a proper second. Any questions or comments? Mr. Chair, I have one. Okay, Councilman Smith. Uh, I just wanted to be clear that there's there are a number of items within this resolution that um, don't specify COVID-19 and it, it's really more for a, a general purpose including uh, community groups gathering ballots to turn in to the election commission and it's some of that language that uh, I struggle with and and how it could allow for um, fraud in the election process so while I support very much what we are already allowed to do which is submit an absentee ballot with, uh, for COVID-19 as, as a purpose. Uh, I think that's very important for our citizens to be able to do. Uh, but the resolution in, in this case, um, because of some of the language in it, uh, I won't be able to support that, but I very much appreciate the fact that all of our citizens definitely need to have the opportunity and, and I'm happy that they can from an absentee point of view. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Vice Chair. And I, I do echo some of those same sentiments. Uh, I have concerns about some of the bullet points that are in uh, this resolution. One, um, that uh, 
allowing uh, ballots to be postmarked by election day to count. I think that would uh, significantly affect uh, the outcome. Uh, and, and then there are a couple of others uh, uh, that I have concerns about as well, so I will not be able to support it either. Uh, Councilman Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Attorney, um, a question. Um, yes. These sentences that have been added as, as, as far as what we are passing here, are any of these enforceable to begin with? The, the provisions that you are asking, you're just simply asking the General Assembly to at least develop different methods. And it's up to them to do that on the law. This body has no ability to change the election law here in Tennessee, but you're urging them to look at all sorts of methods to allow people to be able to cast their ballots. So, so, so what, we're, what we're doing here, we vote for this, would be simply turning to the state and saying, can you, can you do a little bit more with your election laws. Yes, and it's up to them in the bottom line. Okay, thank you. Okay, I see no other hands. Uh, Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Councilman Oglesby? Yes. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Gilbert? Yes. Councilwoman Coonrod? Yes. Councilman Berg? Yes. Vice Chairman Smith? No. Chairman Henderson? No. That's five yeses. Motion carries then, five to two. Um, six, or I'm sorry, seven C, please. A resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into lease amendment number three with Irwin Marine Riverfront LLC and substantially the form attached to amend the rent effective April 30, 2020 to a sum equal to a percentage of the annual gross revenue a tenant made from or upon the premises at a rent factor of 3.5% of gross revenue derived from the premises. I tell you what, Madam Clerk, uh, uh, Councilman Oglesby, before we do this, uh, if there's no objections, I would go. I would like to go ahead and take C, D, and E together, uh, so that we can all vote on them as a package. You have any objections? None at all, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, go ahead and read D and E, and let's take those as a package, please. Yes, item D. A resolution approving the acceptance and distribution of fiscal year 2020 through 2021 Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, and Home Investment Partnership Act funds, home from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, and Program Income, all totaling approximately $3,309,792, as shown more fully here and below. E, a resolution approving the City of Chattanooga's five-year community development consolidated planning components for 2020 through 2024. Councilman Oglesby? Yes, yes, Mr. Chair. Move to approve C, D, and E, please, sir. Thank you. Second. Okay, we have a motion to approve these three items with a proper second. Any questions or comments? Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Councilman Byrd? Yes. Councilwoman Coonrod? Is Councilwoman, you're muted. Uh, I'm going to assume that she has left the meeting for a moment, Madam Clerk. Councilman Gilbert? Yes. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Oglesby? Yes. Vice Chairman Smith? Yes. Chairman Henderson? Yes. It's six yeses. Six yeses. So moved. All right. Um, 7F, please. A resolution to confirm the mayor's reappointments of Vince Butler, District 3, and Cynthia Coleman, District 5, to the Beer and Record Board with both terms expiring July 31, 2023. Councilman Smith, followed by Councilman Gilbert. Move approval, sir. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a proper second. Any questions or comments? If not, roll call, please. Councilman Byrd? Yes. Councilwoman Coonrod? Yes. Councilman Gilbert? Yes. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Oglesby? Yes. Vice Chairman Smith? Yes. Chairman Henderson? Yes. That is for seven yeses. Seven yeses. Motion carries. Uh, if there are no objections from the council, we will take G, H, and I as a package. 
if there's no objections. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you would, uh, G, H, and I. Okay. Item G, a resolution of authorizing the approval of change order number one for Hefferlin Cronenberg Architects PLLC relative to contract number R170041, Greenway Farms new conference facility for additional professional services in the amount of $29,600 for a revised contract amount of $105,600. Item H, a resolution authorizing an administrator for the Department of Transportation to apply for and, if awarded, accept a Land and Water Conservation Fund Outdoor Recreation Legacy Partnership, ORLP, program grant from the National Park Service to construct the Alton Park Connector with the city's contribution not to exceed $1,515,000 for an amount not to exceed $1 million for a total amount of $2,515,000. Item I, a resolution authorizing payment to the Tennessee Department of Transportation, TDOT, for the City of Chattanooga share of an agreement with Arcadis US Inc. relative to contract number T15035 for professional construction, engineering, and inspection services associated with Chestnut Street from West 4th Street to the, north, to the north of Aquarium Way and Bailey Avenue and from east of Norfolk Southern Rail, Railroad to Dodds Avenue in the amount of $45,717.57. Councilman Oglesby. Council, I move to approve G, H, and I. Second. Okay, Councilman Smith has a second. Any questions or comments? If not, uh, Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Councilman Ogilvie? Yes. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Gilbert? Yes. Councilwoman Coonrod? Yes. Councilman Bird? Yes. Vice Chairman Smith? Yes. Chairman Henderson? Yes. That's a seven yeses. Motion carries. Now, Madam Clerk, we're going to read. <clears throat> 7J, it's my understanding that the administration is asking for this item to be tabled. So if you would uh, go ahead and read 7J, please. The resolution authorizes the administrator for the Department of Youth and Family Development to renew the Lexia reading contract in the amount of $28,000. What is the pleasure of the council? Move to table. Second. We have a motion to table with a proper second. Questions or comments? If not, Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Councilman Oglesby? Yes. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Gilbert? Yes. Councilwoman Coonrod? Yes. Councilman Bird? Yes. Vice Chairman Smith? Yes. Chairman Henderson? Yes. Yes, seven yeses. Motion to table carries. Now we move to purchases. Miss Lydia, would you bring Mr. Salmons on while we pull up our purchase list for this evening? Yes, sir. Good evening, Mr. Salmons. Good evening, Mr. Chair and members of council. We have several items this evening of purchase recommendations for your approval. The first five being from the Citywide Services Division of Public Works. The first item being concrete pipes being awarded to Foley Product Crunk Company and an estimated annual cost of $300,000. The next item being manhole components being awarded to Atchison Foundry and Machine Works Incorporated for an estimated annual cost of $100,000. Next, Processing and marketing of single stream curbside recyclable materials being awarded to West Rock Converting LLC for an estimate annual cost of $175,000. And the next item, marketing of clean recyclables for recycling collection centers being awarded to West Rock Converting <coughs> LLC for an estimated annual cost of $75,000. Next, Ground maintenance for city right of ways being awarded to R and A property maintenance for an estimated annual cost of one hundred and five thousand dollars. And the last item from the waste resource division of public works. 
items of sewer maintenance equipment being awarded to Environmental Products and Accessories LLC for an estimated annual cost of $25,000. Mr. Chair, that concludes the committed purchases for this evening. Thank you, Mr. Sammons. What is the pleasure of the council? Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Questions or comments? Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Councilman Bird. Yes. Councilwoman Coonrod. Yes. Councilman Gilbert. Yes. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Oglesby? Yes. Vice Chairman Smith? Yes. Chairman Henderson? Yes. Seven yeses. Very well. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Sammons. I guess he's already been let out. <laughs> okay. Let me scroll back down to my agenda. All right, now we move to other business. Do we have any other business that needs to be brought before the council this evening? Councilman Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I was hoping that we'd hear from Councilman Ledford tonight, but he has other things going on, obviously. Um, so I wanted to bring up um, a question to the council and maybe make some suggestions about where what the next steps are for steep slopes the legislation. Um, I know that uh, Mr. Mr. Bridger um, mentioned that uh, what we saw last Tuesday was a reflection of the potential uh, of a potential for phase three of the construction process. Uh, I know we have a couple of, of documents that have been furnished us by the administration to look at for phase two, and uh, it seems to me that potentially we need a little more work on phase one. Um, I was just wanting to hopefully get from the council a consensus that would say we're ready to move forward without wasting any more time. So what I'm looking for is some suggestions from the council on how to move forward to get this legislation further down the road and hopefully pass in the next month or two so we can uh, get it off our uh, get it off our tables, so to speak. I'm going to look for some hands, and if I don't see any, I'm going to give you some suggestions, Councilman. Um, I'm looking for hands, and I'm not seeing any. Uh, I think maybe what we need to do at this point, um, uh, I think Mr. Bridger has uh, been involved with what, what he's seen in uh, phase three with the restoration uh, that was presented, uh, I believe it was last week. Uh, the documents that we have seen, we all all seen are referring to the phase two. And so I guess what I think uh, probably what we need to do is just ask uh, Mr. Bridger to draft uh, something, uh, some maybe just rough language of how to address uh, one and two and incorporate three and then bring it to the council. If, uh, if, if th that would be my suggestion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, that would be fine, but I, I guess we're going to need uh, Councilman Ledford to call another meeting. Um, is there any, um, do we want to put a, a request with a time on it for Mr. Bridger, or do we want to not get that aggressive tonight? Uh, I don't know if we want to get that aggressive tonight. Why don't we put that on a strategic planning agenda for next week? and uh, discuss it a little more fully at that time and maybe uh, Councilman Ledford would be able to join us. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you put on our uh, strategic planning agenda for next week, uh, discussion of steep slopes? Yes, we'll do that. And, okay, thank you. Councilwoman Coonrod, other business? Yes, um, Daisy, she emailed uh, the entire council the information about um, what it will cost to add an additional holiday to Juneteenth. Um, she supplied us with that information. So I would like for us to discuss that in committee or do we need to create a legislation with Phil prior to discussing it? Well, uh, now here again, I think that would be a budget amendment since we're talking about uh, money being involved. But before it goes to a committee, I think it does need to have some legislation attached with it. 
All right, so I get with Phil. I mean, I didn't know if we wanted to discuss it to even see if we need to create legislation around it, but uh, I tell you what we can do under uh, pending and uh, future legislation, uh, Madam Clerk, we could put uh, at strategic planning, we could put that as an item uh, that you could discuss next week if you want to, Councilwoman. That'll be perfect. Thank you. Okay. Um, Madam, yes. Madam Clerk, if you would add that as well, too, please. Yes. And then uh, one last thing on the other business, if I may, Chair, is that, um, of course, August is uh, election time for us um, again. So we want to make sure that people are requesting the correct ballots if you are requesting an absentee ballot. And if you need to have additional information as to what happens next after you request that, uh, you can text HC absentee to 97. 779 or you can visit chai.city slash vote and um you know those questions can be answered or we'll direct you to the site to see um where you can have a, a visual on what needs to happen but it's very important that if you request an absentee ballot that you request if you want a democrat ballot if you want a republican ballot because what's happening is people are requesting an absentee ballot and they're just getting a general ballot sent out and their candidate isn't listed on that general ballot so you have to be specific in the request that you're asking what kind of ballot in particular that you're needing thank you chair thank you any other council person with other business if not we will move to committee reports councilman mitchell Oh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We will have a public works and transportation committee meeting next week, and a part of that agenda will be a discussion from the administration on the global, global green lighting audit that we have received from the auditor, and I'd like to request that the auditor be present on this meeting to uh, discuss that. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you make sure that uh the auditor gets an invitation to this committee meeting? Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay. All right, great. Vice Chair Smith? No report, Mr. Sir. Uh, Councilwoman Coonrod? Uh, today we had um, Alpha, a youth and family development uh, meet, committee meeting today. We talked about Office of Family Empowerment and um, what we're doing to help people during the COVID pandemic. Um, and we also had uh, Jason to come talk about the Service, educational services that we're offering in our YFD sites virtually. Um, and if anyone needs a tutor for their kids, they can contact 643-6081 or email education at chattanooga.gov so we can get them connected to a tutor. We most definitely don't want any of our children falling behind since um, you know we're experiencing this pandemic. And then also if you're needing help, um, assistance with your rent and things like that, uh, call 423 643 6434, and you can also email a lot heap at chattanooga.gov and receive um, additional resources as well. And we've partnered with Economic and Community Development, that's another avenue to receive help as well. And you can reach out to them at 423 643 7322, or email them at ecdhelp at chattanooga.gov. Uh, we're all working together to make sure that our constituents are receiving the tools and resources that are needed. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Bird. No report. Councilman Oglesby. No report, but if I may, Mr. Chair, I'm gonna back up just for a second to, okay. um, to uh, notify the council that I've gotten with the city attorney and I'll, I will be making a reappointment of Bill Lockhart to the Sports Authority Board next week. Very well, thank you, sir. Thank you. Councilman Gilbert. No report. All right. That brings us to recognition of persons wishing to address the council at this time. So uh, if you have registered uh, to speak this evening, if you would like to raise your hand, uh, I will ask the vice chair to confirm that these individuals uh, have indeed registered uh, prior to the meeting. And council, I mean, um, Mr. Attorney, if you would go ahead and read our rules uh, to address the council, please. Yes, sir. Um, we have on our website each week here, a notice to all participants about the virtual meetings that occur. 
uh, the governor most recently extended the order allowing these public meetings to be done by Zoom until August 29th, uh, 2020 here, uh, unless other action is taken by the governor. And based on the governor's order, uh, we have been having these electronic meetings. At the end of each council business meeting, the chair can recognize members of the public that wish to talk to the council. And here's your rules. Uh, each speaker wishing to address the council can only be recognized after uh, they provide information about their name, address, or in council of district. Uh, no person can have more than three minutes to speak during this time. You can address the council only upon matters within their legislative and quasi-judicial authority and not upon matters that are not under their authority or which are regulated by other governmental bodies. Uh, and you're not permitted to use any vulgar, obscene language, nor use the floor to personally attack or personally denigrate others and address the council as a body as a whole and not make comments directed towards any individual council members. So please, at this point in time, when you're recognized, please provide comments. Okay, Vice Chair, can you confirm one, two, three, four individuals that they have registered to speak? Yes, sir, we are good. Uh, Miss Lydia, if you'd bring in Ben Campbell, please. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? I can, go ahead. All right, uh, Ben Campbell, District 2. I'm calling this evening to demand that you approach the amendment sent to the council by the Chattanooga Democratic Socialists of America with a serious intention to make changes within the 2021 budget. As laid out in their spreadsheet, there are numerous ways to reallocate funds that better support the communities of black and brown people in Chattanooga rather than policing them. As I've stated in previous council meetings, the presence of a community outreach program within the police department is an oxymoron. The police cannot be trusted to connect with the community that they so frequently oppress, abuse, and murder. The understaffed and under-resourced YFD outreach program, which is slated to receive zero dollars, is one that puts individuals in contact with other members and resources in their community before an officer toting <coughs> a gun and a history of violence even makes an appearance. People seeking life assistance should not be met with force and the threat of aggression or even possibly death. Another program that was allocated no money in the 2021 budget was the Chattanooga Food Bank. Now, if this does not scream inequality at you, then these public comments are falling on deaf ears. How can you justify spending over $100,000 on polygraphs for CPD, but can't see the urgent need to nourish children, clothe and feed the homeless, and support families that are unable to support themselves fully? How are you able to explain the fact that you are shutting off funds to two programs essential to so many communities while in a pandemic? You honestly should be very ashamed of yourselves for the joke of a budget you pushed for so strongly. But the Chattanooga DSA has given you a clear cut plan to make changes that would turn <coughs> that would turn your shame into an understanding and compassion for every person in our city. There should no longer be talk coming from the council on what we can do to make our constituents safer, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, because that plan has been extensively presented to you. On a final note, the protests have been a place for people to express their pain and frustrations, a place to stand together against the systemic racism in this country, a place to be fed and taken care of as if we are all one family. We see the actions of CPD arresting our leaders and protesters on false accusations as a desperate act to try and gut our community and stop the momentum that has been generated. Guess what, it's not gonna work because we are all one family and we will never leave our comrades behind in the continuing fight for, e for equality. The people united will never be defeated and all Black Lives Matter, I yield my time. Katie Kill. Miss Lydia. Yes, sir. Hey, can y'all hear me? We can, go ahead. Excellent. Give me one second. Okay. Uh, so since I last talked to y'all last week, um, I've learned that uh, certain counselors are concerned about the idea of program design uh, with regard to the amendments that we've submitted for your consideration. So um, they're talking about the importance of carefully designing new policies and programs before we bring them to the rest of the council to vote on them. So I, I just want to say first, uh, this shows a complete lack of understanding of our proposals uh, to the point of, you know, possibly you didn't even read them at all. Uh, because the vast majority of our ideas don't involve creating a new program, they simply increase the funding level for a program that already exists. Uh, second, um, there's also been commentary uh, about the council being a policy making body that isn't overly concerned with the sources or destinations of funding. 
Um, but if that were true, the council wouldn't be required to vote to approve the budget in the first place. So I don't buy that, quite frankly, uh, because funding levels and their particular details are policy. So when we choose to fund uh, police ammunition, for example, to the tune of $100,000, and we cut the measly $10,000 we gave to the food bank last year, uh, in the middle of a pandemic where millions of people are jobless and we're seeing news coverage of cars lining up for miles to get food, uh, that is policy. That is an act of choice to fund weapons instead of an organization that feeds human beings. So uh, the amount we have chosen to spend in 2021 on completely useless lie detectors, which is $108,000, that could feed 144,000 people for a day, according to the Chattanooga Area Food Bank. We'll let that sink in. 144,000 people for the $108,000 that we spend on lie detectors. So 20 or 20% of the population in our area are projected to go hungry because of COVID-19. So uh, y'all can keep stalling and talking about sitting down and making sure we have all of our imaginary ducks in a row and forming exploratory committees to make new programs and all this stuff. But every delay that y'all put in front of these ordinances means that people will go hungry when you could have fed them. And y'all are the ones that are gonna have to live with that. So I hope y'all are, uh, you know, the ones of y'all who are unconvinced about our ideas so far, a couple of you still, uh, I hope y'all have an ambient prescription because I know I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. I yield my time. Catherine Merck, Miss Lydia. Yes, sir. I'm here. I go ahead. Uh, my name is Catherine Burt. I vote in district two and I would just like to agree with my other comrades, I just want a common sense budget for this city. I think we need to address the crises we are facing now head on. We have, we're, we're dealing with massive unemployment, um, building, building our public transportation system and investing in Head Start childcare will help Chattanoogans get back to work. Um, our kids have been through some really difficult months. They've dealt with a lot of trauma. They need the support and sense of community our YFD centers provide. Um, we are facing a mass, massive housing crisis and we are not investing in homeless outreach or affordable housing. Um, these problems are not going to get go away. They are only going to get worse. Just like uh, my comrade was talking about with the food bank, um, thousands of Chattanoogans are still unemployed. I've been unemployed since March. I can't find a job and my unemployment runs out in two weeks. So I might be going to that food bank and I would like you guys to fund it, please. Thank you. I yield the rest of my time. Abigail Roberts. Yes, hello, can you hear me? I can. You yes. Hi, um, Mr. Henderson. Forgive me. Um, did I miss here earlier that perhaps discussion on the um, area plan for River to Ridge has been moved to next week? The discussion was held earlier uh, this afternoon. Oh, okay. I guess so. Then my comment is brief for the committee. I'm assuming that you have not voted then on this. Um, I thought I was at the right meeting for this, but um, my hope is that the vote will be uh, to vote on either the plan. Um, without amendments or modifications five and six um, or approve the February draft. Um, I live in district nine and I'm a property owner that would be directly in the overlay. Um, we own uh, five uh, lots of record and about 10 some acres in that area on Missionary Ridge. My interest is very spe specifically in protection for the neighborhoods um, in the surrounding area that would be affected by the overlay not only when it comes to scarring of the land, uh, runoff of water. Um, and I think it's a very simple and small thing uh, that the overlay adds. It does not prevent me, another landowner or a future developer from changing or modifying the land specifically at all. It just is a reminder um, that that is an additional consideration and protection to think of um, for the folks in the neighborhoods that is one uh, that is um, true of other neighborhoods in Chattanooga. So I guess my question and my hope would be if that protection is not offered to East Chattanooga District 9 um, and the neighborhoods there, then why is that? And I would hope and uh, plead with the council to include um, when they vote on that plan to do not include the modifications five and six 
um, or if it has to be in the entirety to approve the February draft. Thank you very much. Thank you. Brody Crowder, please. Yes, sir. Howdy, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can, go ahead. All right, thank you, Council. I'd also like to speak in support of the agenda amendments, so specifically divestment in a lot of points with the police department. Um, to echo some things, yeah, the polygraph part of the budget, 108,000, that, um, that is very well-known pseudoscience. Um, I urge anyone in the council unfamiliar with where that is in our time to look that up and see that 108,000 in there is, it's, it's, it's insane. That it's just too much for something known to not work or do anything useful for us. Um, I also would love to see more of this police budget reinvested into more of the our affordable housing fund, our Head Start programs, our daycares, our court translation fees, like they said before, the food bank, um, which I've volunteered at quite a few times, along with some other students, um, or some of my other students, uh, to see some reinvestment into that as well. So thank you, I yield my time. Okay, um, Vice Chair Smith, could you confirm one, two, three, four, five hands that are up right now have registered to speak? Yes, sir, they're all good. Okay, Casey Crook. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Casey Crook. I live in District 3, um, and I am here to speak in support of the, um, uh, the amendments put forth. Um, that I believe you all will be discussing starting on next Tuesday. Um, as so many others have said before me, there are so many um, great uh, movements um, uh, for and away uh, to, to uh, reallocate the budgets, but I wanted to briefly talk about um, the uh, ideas of safety and security specifically. Um, so uh, uh, the uh, first safety is is basically it's it's the the lack of um, danger coming to you personally and security is um, if there is danger the ability to get away from it so uh, an easy example is my cat is scared of the vacuum um, but she can run away from it she can move to a different room um, I mentioned this because um, in in America especially we think that the only way that we can get safety and security is through the police or or through policing um we believe that um we can if we don't have police then people will be breaking into our houses there will be no accountability for people that do break into houses or that uh, perform other violent actions against um other uh members of our community including ourselves um but that's simply not true and that's that's not what people are calling for um, because uh, as I'm sure so many of you know, um, I, I imagine so many of you, especially, um, uh, <laughs> I was gonna break a rule, but uh, I, I imagine so many of you um, uh, that live in um, well-off areas or, or, or live on mountains or, or live in, um, uh, in suburbs, um, are much more familiar or already familiar with what a um, what a community that does not require police looks like um, a community where people have their needs met and where people um, have safety and they uh, they already have the security um, and I, 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 I call for for you as the council to to reconsider the uh, the over reliance of uh, uh, on police to provide safety and security for the um, for uh, 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 the uh, Chattanoogans and instead to look to um, uh, creating um, more stable, more healthy, more um, equitable society um, that benefits everyone in Chattanooga. And sorry to randomly transition, but I'm gonna use my time, but 32% um, uh, of Americans uh, miss their July house payments. Um, and that's up from 30% in June. Um, that means um, if, uh, I, I don't know the statistics specifically for Chattanooga, but roughly one in three Chattanoogans missed their June and or July housing payments. Um, we can say that it's not enough just to pay rent or, or that we have to do, we have to do greater, um, uh, greater steps, bigger <laughs> movements, but fundamentally, um, if people don't have houses, they're less safe. Um, and um, we, we in America are seeing such a huge 
wave of evictions and um, a, a housing crisis in addition to uh, uh, food crises and daycare crises um, as people can't go to work or as people get sick or as people um, don't have jobs anymore. Um, as, as a previous speaker said, um, they, they can't secure housing, they can't secure food, they can't secure safety or, or, or security for themselves and they can't um, guarantee um, that um, they, they don't have to then turn to desperate action. So things such as the, the Chattanooga Area Food Bank um, and other uh, more directly public um, goods and services um, will benefit significantly better than throwing people in jails and uh, giving them records, taking away their rights, uh, things Ms. like Lydia, that. Mr. Crook's time is up. <clears throat> yes, Katie sir. Jo Katie Johnson, please. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Katie Johnson. I'm in District 2. Um, first, I would like to say, council people, we would much rather see you than a timer. You are going to let us know when our time is up regardless. Um, and being able to see your faces react as we are talking to you is really the much preferred option. Um, I'm here, as most folks are to uh, support the DSA amendments and hope or ask you all to please vote for them. Um, and I would like to say it's come to my attention that a certain member of the council has um, told one of her con or one of their constituents, you never demand that policymaking bodies take more money from a specific source. Frankly, this is ridiculous. As a policymaking body, I'm sure the council is aware that funding is, in many cases, more important than policy in successfully or not carrying out policy or projects. Um, and one of the brilliant things about the DSA amendments is that they, they are targeting criminally underfunded programs that already exist, that help people of this city, while taking money from some of the more dubious places, expenses in the police budget, such as the lie detector tests that already folks have come and talked in droves about, about how ineffective they are and how they can't even be used in court. Um, it's literally just throwing money into the wind <laughs> during a time where our community is already extremely vulnerable. Um, I hear people, and you, you all hear, we all hear the people calling for justice and for a better future. Um, and the response from this body has been overwhelmingly, well, that's not how you do it that it doesn't just happen like that. Well, then how do we change things? Does this council have power or not? Can you change things? Can you make our, our city better? Or do you not have that power? Um, and if you do, I don't understand why you wouldn't pass these amendments that have immense support and would do so much for lifting our communities, not only out of potential violence from police, but also to do things like feed them and have resources that can genuinely make people's lives better. Um, I yield my time. All right, Sarah Cantor, please. Yes, sir. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, yes, we can, go ahead. Um, hello, my name is Sarah Cantor and I live in District 8. I'm here tonight, like so many other people are, to uh, request that the city council support the budget amendments that were proposed by the Chattanooga uh, Democratic Socialists of America and uh, that have been supported by several of the council members already. Um, it is clear from this meeting's agenda that condo development is alive and well in Chattanooga and it's time for us as a city to support members of, of our community and sort of pushing them out to build more townhomes. Um, some of the amendments that the DSA has submitted would work to prevent some of the gentrification that happens when we focus on building new developments instead of on the people that already live here. Um, these amendments will reallocate funds to areas that support and benefit Chattanoogans and especially the working class and poor members of our community that are most affected by the bloated police budget. By moving $1 million from the police budget into the affordable housing fund, the city can keep more people in housing, which is so important right now, as I'm sure you're all aware, we're in the middle of a global pandemic. Um, on top of that, Tennessee has been uh, called an area of uncontrolled spread 
of COVID-19 in Chattanooga has been named a national hotspot in the national media. We cannot afford to have more Chattanoogans pushed out of their homes. I've spoken to the city council several times and every time I mention this fact, because I think it's so appalling, but there are 200 people and families who are in shelters and on the streets every night in Chattanooga. There are about 700 people who don't have their own bed to sleep in every night in Chattanooga. We can't keep pushing people out of homes. We also need to support the Chattanooga Area Food Bank. Um, again, this pandemic has already affected food costs and supply chain logistics and funding to the food bank was, as far as I know, cut in the budget that was passed. Um, Chattanoogans are already being impacted by the increase in food costs and the sometimes unavailability of food in grocery stores. And we have to really take a, a stand here and make sure that people aren't going hungry during this pandemic when so many people, people you've heard from tonight are unemployed or furloughed and can't get to a grocery store. Um, and with that, I yield my time. Evelina Curte. Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, go ahead, we can hear you. Hi, um, hello, I am Evelina Curte. I'm, I live in district six. Briefly, I would like you all like to thank you all for passing the equality ordinance. Even though I disagree with you all on a lot of things, as a trans citizen, that means a lot. In addition, tonight, I urge you to continue your push for equality by accepting Chattanooga DSA's budget amendments. LGBT citizens, particularly those of color, are both disproportionately more likely to be attacked by police and disproportionately more likely to need public services. So in the spirit of equality for both people of color, LGBT people, and all citizens, we allocate funding from a number of, a number of budget items, including police advertising, uh, pseudoscientific polygraphs, and the real-time intelligence center uh, to essential services, such as the affordable housing fund, Head Start salaries, daycare, YFD outreach, the Chattanooga Public Library, and the Chattanooga Area Food Bank. You made a written statement in request for equality tonight. I ask you to take a direct stance also for the material equality of all Chattanooga citizens. Thank you for your, thank you for your time. I yield the rest of my time. Michael Moss, please. I'm, I'm sorry? Michael Moss. Yes, sir. Hello? Uh, go ahead, we can hear you. Uh, hello, my name is Michael. Uh, I live in District 2. I had stated District 1 in my application, so I apologize for that misconception. Uh, a lot of what I'm going to be speaking on is reading directly off of the amendment proposals put forth by the uh, Chattanooga Dem Democratic Socialist of America. Um, and it's not just that organization. I mean, they are working following the lead of organizations like I Can't Breathe CHA, uh, Chattanoogans in Action for Love, Equality, and Benevolence, uh, and multiple others. Uh, <clears throat> I also want to thank the council for not attempting to silence the people. Uh, you say you want to hear from us, but then our time is limited, and uh, but that's a different conversation. Um, the, the amendments were put forth to you uh, on Monday, June 22nd. So if I'm not mistaken, that is three weeks and one day to the date. So I feel like if you have not read over those, that is just, I mean, yeah, that is just crazy. Um, so take a breath. The, the misallocation of these public funds, it's part of systemic racism that you're supporting. Uh, it, it hurts the Chattanoogans. Uh, and they have been crying night after night in the recent weeks, uh, walking the streets. Uh, you may see these people as hooligans or however you want to call them. However, they are just um, representing themselves. They're using their freedom of speech. Uh, radically changing the, bu the budget may be difficult, but it is vital. Uh, it's just one step and we will not be satisfied until we have removed these barriers that prevent people from living the life that they wish to live. I mean, $100,000 to pseudoscience when that money could be used to feed people on the street, that is insane. Um, additionally, I feel like the statement uh, that was provided earlier saying that the council is just in an organization uh, mainly focused on policy is ridiculous. Uh, 
as stated before, if you vote on the budget, obviously that is a concern for the council. Um, so I strongly urge you to listen. Um, Black Lives Matter and I yield the rest of my time. Jared Story, Miss Lydia. Yes, sir. Hi, Jared Story, District 9. Um, I want to um, also say that I appreciate um, the, um, the vote on the equality resolution, um, except um, for the two who then negated their vote with the following resolution on uh, voter um, access. Um, and then I also wanted to uh, support the um, DSA amendments. Um, I'm not gonna belabor the point. I agree um, with what's been said so far and I've expressed um, my thoughts on defunding the police multiple times. So I just want to um, add my voice to supporting the DSA uh, amendments, thanks. All right, Vice Chair, could you confer, confirm Tamara Woodard? Yes, sir. She's good. Yeah, she, mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Miss Lydia. Yes, sir. Um, Miss Woodard. Yes. Go ahead. I, I'd also like to uh, thank you for your vote on equality, and on. Um, and again, I want. Would you give us um, your district number, please? Um, district nine. Okay. And um, the DSA amendment. Also, I'd like to thank you uh, uh, for listening and um, and hearing that I also support and the defunding and the divestment in uh, the military policing in our city. Thank you for your time. All right. Okay. Uh, council, I see no other hands at this time. What's the pleasure of the council? Uh, sure, I move oh, adjourn. Uh, 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 Councilman Oglesby, I just noticed one other hand, sir. Okay. You, let, you want to go ahead and hear from this? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Uh, Miss Lydia Andrea Hassler. Yes, sir. Uh, hold on one second. Let's put our clock back up. Okay, go ahead. Hello, are you able to hear me? Go ahead. Yes, we can. Um, thank you. I wanted to thank the council members for um, your time and listening to the input from citizens would, would, of our community. Would, would you give us your one. district number, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm in District 7. Okay. Sorry about that, Andrew. Go ahead. Um, I also wanted to commend the Chattanooga DSA for their time that they took to put together to dig through the budget that you all approved and to identify real opportunities for divesting from a flawed system that has kept our people in poverty, that has kept our people in prison away from their families, and that has kept our people hungry and identified ways and opportunities that we can invest in those people to ensure that they will survive this life and that they will thrive through it. Not because they cannot, but because they are in a community and in a system and within a city that invests in opportunities for them. So I really commend the amendments that are proposed here and I support them. I work for a nonprofit in town and I know that there are many other nonprofits in this town that rely on the donations from our citizens. And there are several of um, nonprofits in the uh, Chattanooga Homeless and Food Bank is one of them that many of us have donated to regularly out of our own pockets. We do that because it's important and I would really like to see the this, this city find ways to take a little bit to give a little bit for those who need it. Um, the fact that, um, you know, we've seen this week, some of the organizers of peaceful protests that have encouraged and organized and thoughtfully planned and executed peaceful protests have been arrested and set at a bail at the same level as an individual who is drunkenly armed on top of a building overlooking those peaceful protests, not just a few weeks ago. That to me shows that our system of policing 
and incarceration is inherently flawed. And it makes me question, who do we protect? Who do we serve? These amendments are an opportunity to show who you do protect and who you serve, who you invest in, who you help when they're in need and how you invest in a community for the future. Um, it's 2020, now's the time to make these changes. Um, if you wanna continue to think of excuses um, or ways that it's not necessary or it doesn't need to be dealt with, um, you're missing an opportunity and it's your time. Um, so uh, thank you for your time, I appreciate it. And I support the amendments proposed by the DSA. Thank you. All right. Councilman Oglesby, I see no other hands. Would you like to? Well, we adjourn. All right. We, we are adjourned. Thank you, Ms. Lydia. You'll end our session.